Disciplinary charges pursuant to Section 3020A, whereas the superintendent of schools has preferred a disciplinary charge against the employee named in the confidential Schedule A, pursuant to Section 3020A of the New York State Education Law, and whereas the Board of Education has determined by a, mo a vote of majority of all the members of the board that probable cause exists for the charge preferred against said employee by the superintendent of schools, be it resolved that the employee named in the confidential Schedule A is hereby suspended pending a hearing on the charge and the final determination thereof. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Brian Giorgiotti, Esquire, to uh, provide services as the district representative related to the above reference disciplinary charge at a rate of compensation not to exceed $125 per hour for the reasonable and necessary services rendered in addition to reimbursement for related incidental expenses. Be it further resolved that should the employee named in the executive session either waive his or her right to a hearing or be found guilty of the charges after a hearing, the Board of Education shall, shall seek his or her termination from service in the Trumansburg Central School District. A motion for that, please. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item six, agenda changes. None. Okay, correspondence. Yes, it was. So, um, do you want me to read this? How do you want to do this? Yes, please read it. Okay. Is this it? Okay. Yes, we, we did have a, a very nice letter um, from Cynthia Hagen, um, which I will read. Please forward to the Trumansburg Board of Education members, to the Board of Education members, um, dated uh, November 16th. I have learned something positive about our schools at every single Board of Education meeting I have attended, and Monday was no exception. Hunt's architecture has really worked extremely hard for Trumansburg. To come up with a $25 million proposal that has no tax impact is awe-inspiring just by the scope of it. I could not believe what I was seeing. I do not know how Hunts Architect was chosen to work on Trumansburg's capital project proposals, but all I can say is well done. In coming up with the newest option, one proposal, Hunts did exactly what any person that has it to live within their means would do. You have to make hard decisions. That is life. How Hunt spent $25 million and did it? Just wow. I would say the entire board, no matter which plan they support, deserves kudos that your choice of Hunt's and all of your hard work has brought a plan like this to the table. No matter what the outcome is, no one can say that Hunt's did not do their job. My faith was restored a bit in the world just by that single presentation on Monday. So to the board and to Hans, kudos, respectfully, Cynthia, Cindy Hagen. So thank you on behalf of the entire board. I did respond to Ms. Hagen um, in an email um, on behalf of all of you. So. And yes, isn't it nice to receive those kind of emails? <laughs> and, uh, so, thank you. Committee reports, facilities committee. So we do not have a new facilities committee um, 
discussion item for this evening. However, I would encourage the board just to speak publicly about Hunt's presentation at the last board meeting. Uh, there were two proposals for future projects. I don't know if you have questions about those projects, comments that you would like to make publicly. Um, we do have a timeline that we're working within later on in this agenda. You'll see there, um, there's a motion to move forward with the seeker, which is really the environmental impact, regardless of the project that we move forward with. Um, on January 8th, our next board meeting, you'll have an opportunity again to discuss those projects publicly or ask questions. And then on January 22nd, at the latest, um, the board will need to accept a resolution for a proposition uh, to set the date for a March 20th referendum. And there is a meeting for another facility. Meeting. There is a facilities uh, committee meeting scheduled for this Thursday. Uh, that's open to the public. And um, from that, it'll just be another opportunity to ask questions about the two projects presented. Once the board makes a decision about the project they would like to move forward with, um, at that time we'll work with our architects and they will do a, a more public presentation. They'll talk about scope, um, there will be drawings for the public to view, and there will be talking points in terms of what, how will the benefit, how will the community benefit, how do our students benefit, how do our teachers benefit from the proposed project. The timing on that meeting? Um, I'm, I don't have dates for that yet. Uh, no, the facilities the committee. Facilities committee. Oh, okay. 10 a.m. on the 14th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It follows the policy committee meeting. I know it was a little while ago and we just came out of somewhat exhausting executive session to try to collect your thoughts and ask about thoughts or comments on the presentation from a couple weeks ago, but um, Anyone on want to offer comments or? Um, I did speak with uh, Jeff from Hunt, and I know there was concern at the last board meeting that the middle school lockers may not be included yes. in the scope of work. I have been reassured uh, by Jeff that uh, he worked closely with Joe Maglioka to look at the building condition survey and those items that were health and safety. We've included the majority of those, and in addition to that, we've moved the lockers into that project, so they too will be replaced with zero impact to the um, taxpayer. Well, I, I guess just on a personal note, uh, I think that um, this is the struggle that all of us as board members go through is trying to balance the, the needs of our students and the benefits of the programs that we offer to our students with the ability of our taxpayers and our community to be able to afford um, you know anything from the Cadillac to the Yugo uh, or vice versa so um, I, I think that will continue to um, weigh on all of our minds as, as we come to making a decision over the course of the next month um, as Kimberly said we will have to reach a decision um, towards the end of January so that we can move forward in a, in a timely manner and, and put the whatever we decide in terms of proposition out to the public uh, for a March referendum. That's correct. Right. Um, I also, um, it, it was a nice segue with uh, Cindy's email uh, to lead us into this discussion, but um, I, I think that she caps, encapsulated the, the the struggle that we go through um, in terms of saying that you know, we need to live within our budget. A quick question for Joe, and I apologize for not getting this to you ahead of time, but the, the new one point, whatever it is, that Hunt presented um, at our last board meeting, how much of the one category one priorities in terms of our five-year plan does that address? All of them. Oh, all of them. Yeah, okay. they're all priority ones. And then we also had priority twos and priority threes that were the remainder of the BCS items that we weren't able to capture because we captured all of the ones. So all of the ones were what our facilities committee in 2015 determined as priority ones. So moving forward with either one of those projects will capture all of those priority ones from the 2015 yep. uh, Buildings Condition Survey. Yep. Great. 
Go ahead. I wasn't at the last board meeting, unfortunately, but being a part of the facility committee, I just have to say that I feel like we're um, we're in a really great place of understanding the scope of the work from each of the building principals. They've shared, um, you know, great pers their perspective, um, hearing from them, and then hearing from Joe as well um, and Mike Pliss. I think it's really helpful to hear, you know, where we're headed instructionally and how these changes that we've made impact the the, the present the plans that are being proposed. So. Um, and I also have to say kudos to Gary for helping to facilitate some tricky conversations around vision for where we're going. Um, it's, it's, I, you know, I'm sorry I didn't hear that presentation, but I look forward to um, hearing from Hunt again. They're doing a great job. Any other comments? Okay. <coughs> um, Douglas, anything from both these or Central New York School Boards? No, um, I left my computer at home. Okay. Um, but no, I'll be very brief. Um, sometime, I think it's at the beginning of next week, uh, Central New York School Boards will be officially opening their new offices at Whitewaters. Oh, so yes. I think everyone probably received an invitation to that. It would probably be an interesting thing to attend. Um, it's going to be a real change of plans. Both seasons are sort of tying in with it as well in terms of um, making more and more connections with industry here. And MACME is very much involved in trying to get their connections straight with us as well. So I think it will eventually wind up bringing all of us into a more formalized uh, relationship with businesses in our areas. I'm really excited about it. Um, <clears throat> I also attended a, a BOCES, excuse me, a rural schools session last week up at Wayne Finger Lakes and was really struck by some of the presentations. They, what they did basically was pull a few pres presenters from uh, who were just either applied late or were not selected for this summer's um, sessions. And they were truly amazing in terms of what some of our really, truly small rural schools that are losing teachers like crazy are doing with education. For example, combining math with social studies and looking at my impairments in Egyptian sculptures and, and such and combining uh, geometry and math as well. It's absolutely fascinating what they're doing and collaborating. They're, they're just sort of collapsing classes and, uh, you know, have two to three teachers to a room in some cases, all in different subject matters. Yeah. Seem to be doing just fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was, it was fascinating to watch the demonstrations of theirs. And then both these. Um, received a Togo Award from Cornell um, honoring both these um, and our college uh, instructional program teacher research um, with Ithaca College career skills at Cornell all of those um, connections that both these is now making with the community um, have really made an impression and Cornell is really welcoming us with open arms. Um, I loved the article the other week in uh, the Free Press about Jeannie's students, um, and, or I should say staff, I guess, really. Um, and that was also really encouraging. So things are, are progressing there. With the budget playing out the way it is right now, we're not sure of um, how the money from the state's going to break down in terms of what BOCES needs to build. Um, and it may wind up being that we wind up, I mean, the, the monies will stay the same, but how they're arranged is going to possibly be a little different um, and how they're paid out. Other than that, um, I think 
that's about it. Um, yeah. Questions for Douglas? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry. No. Nope. Yeah. Administrator's report. Um, Lauren, do you want to share with us oh. your proposed 2018-19 uh, budget calendar? Mm -hmm. I'll get back to Page 40. 40 to 32, there. <coughs> okay, that. Um, so in December, um, as we have, we're, we're presenting the calendar today, and we're looking at um, talking about what parameters, well, tonight obviously we're not going to too much of a discussion about parameters, and they may be delayed to the next, to the next meeting um, at this point. Um, I'll work on projecting revenues, which will, at this point, will be pretty much flat. Hopefully, with the news coming out of the federal government to the state government, uh, we're hoping that there's going to be too much of an impact, negative impact going on. So, uh, positive impact, hopefully we'll get our things will roll, but we really don't have any um, indication yet as to where things are going to go, especially with the, um, the unknowns um, out there. Um, so through January, we're going to do a lot of the budget planning and then present preliminary administrative budgets in January meeting. It'll be basically an overall overview of where, where the forecasted revenues and, and some of the some of the expenses we're going to have moving forward. And we'll fine tune that going down the road. We don't have as many board meetings scheduled this year apparently as you've had in I think last year. So. Um, We'll, we'll also be looking at doing the um, special education and structural operations, maintenance, and transportation budgets in February. We certainly can schedule more. Um, so if, it's, if you want to break it up more, that's really the question. Is if I went with the scheduled meetings that you mm -hmm. have. If you want to break it down into smaller pieces, certainly that's that's uh, your discretion. Um, by March 1st, we have the tax levy limit, um, and then that was the given formulas for what the district's allowed to raise in terms of tax levy without the supermajority votes. Um, all that will be submitted. Um, going down the bolded, the just to the bolded um, dates, the final draft budget has to be adopted by the board by April 16th, and the annual meeting will be um, on May 15th. All the other legal pieces are filling in, in between. Okay. Thank you. Questions for Lauren on the proposed calendar? So as we move through this, then we can decide as a board whether we need to meet uh, maybe once at, um, or, or twice uh, that other than our scheduled meetings. So um, I do see we're only scheduled once in February. So. Um, and uh, so if we need more, we'll, we'll agree to alter the calendar and go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Jason is not, not yes. here. Oh, he is. Oh, Jason, you're hiding there behind the, the, the stacks. Thank you so much for uh, taking time uh, to come and, and yeah. share this with us, but especially tonight when the, the meeting was extended to such a great degree and a little out of order. So we know that takes away from your family uh, unusual night. We appreciate it. No problem. Um, I left a little write-up sheet, just a little attachment that breaks down the fall season and everything that we have accomplished. Um, I'm just going to touch on a couple of these things. Um, we had seven JV and varsity teams compete in the fall. Of those seven teams, five of those teams were division champions. And that's pretty impressive. Um, of those five teams that were champions, two of them claimed the overall IAC crown. Um, so we had two league champions. We had two teams that after league schedule was set out and teams advanced to sectionals, we had two teams compete for a sectional championship in volleyball and girls soccer. Um, we had three state competitors um, in cross country. Um, Evan Whitaker, Aiden Miguel for the boys, and Caitlin Feely for the girls. 
So that's quite an accomplishment to compete on the entire New York stage um, against schools that are our size. Um, Evan then went on to compete at the Federation meet, which takes it to another level. Now we take school size out of the picture and you go run against every kid from um, New York State. So that's a pretty, pretty tall accomplishment for him. It's maybe second or third that we've ever had compete at that level. Um, so that's pretty, pretty outstanding. Um, of those seven teams that we had, um, four of those teams had the league division MVP. So they had the most valuable player of the entire division. That's pretty, to get one of those is pretty prestigious. To, have, to be at a school where we took four out of those, that's pretty honorable. Um, and then the last little bit is um, All-Stars. We had 22 first team All-Stars, which means that these are kids that are recognized by not only their coach, um, but the other coaches in the league of being an outstanding student athlete. Um, so we had 22 first team, and then of course there's um, second team, honorable mention for various sports, but those were just the first team. So for seven, 17, we're averaging about three per team, which is pretty awesome. Um, the little box up in the corner is the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Teams. And in order for your team to be awarded um, that label, um, you have to have 75% of your student athletes with a GPA of 90 or above. And we had five teams this fall accomplish that feat. So that's something that's prestigious as well. It's pretty pretty impressive to balance a workload and then turn around and be successful on the field or on the court as well. Um, so we're very fortunate here to have the student athletes we have um, who always go out and represent Trumusburg and good luck. So Jason, if I'm reading this correctly, then one, two, three, all five of the varsity sports that are solely Trumansburg students, were, all of those were named Scholar Athlete? Yes. Athlete teams? Yes, that's wow. that, that is impressive. Great. Questions for Jason? Is this, are these accolades tracked from year to year? Um. There are banners in the gym that track the, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. the divisions. Yeah, yeah. So and specifically what? about the academic side of things. Is that something that's tracked every year? Yes. Um, over the last couple years since I've been here, I think this is my fourth, third, fourth year. Um, you lose track when you're having so much fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it has changed. It used to be. Uh, it used to be that. The 90% could include students who were below that 90%, but as long as the team average was above 90, then. Uh, but yes, this is something that is tracked throughout each season and every year. So this is something you should be able to research on online. I'm just curious how this year compares to other years. Um, we're usually pretty strong. Yeah, this is yeah. Pretty, pretty, it's a consistent. Yeah. I see you smiling over there, John. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud of them. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Just so that the modified's not for, totally forgotten yeah. here. Um, I only have experience with the modified because I have a granddaughter that, that played, uh, ran cross country and is playing volleyball and is ready to move into basketball. Basketball, yeah. Um, just based on her experience, she's had a wonderful time and great coaches. So um, not to... We don't want yeah, that to no, get no. lost it for sure. Yeah. Um, and obviously modify is not as competitive and so we totally understand not keeping track of their stats. Um, but just to know that, that the success of this I'm sure is built on the fact that uh, our modified programs have such great coaches and, and turn out such great kids in terms of numbers and enthusiasm for their sports that continues on. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, then there's extras for people if they want to.
John, did Grace leave you a student report or not? Oh, gosh, you know, we didn't even touch base today. I apologize. Okay, no problem. Um, moving to the consent agenda, um, are there any items in the consent agenda that uh, members would like to uh, discuss and to be removed and discuss individually? Hearing none, uh, those in favor of the consent agenda? Oh, yes, we can move. We don't need a discussion. I'm sorry. So a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda as uh, presented? Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And that moves us to new business. May I have a motion to uh, for acceptance of a donation, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby accepts the no donation of $548.73 from the Trumansburg All Sports Booster Club to purchase a new display letter board for the modified track and field record as presented. Second? Discussion? Thank you. Thank you, yes. A big thank you. And a lot of great records, so we do want to, And they have been up in the middle school for... Um, the tape's falling off, so... Th we, we three know. decades. <laughs> I, I can attest to two and a half of those three decades, so it's definitely time that we thank the, the All Sports Booster Club for their donation. Interesting, 73 cents. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Um, motion to declare um, the intent to be lead agency for the Trumansburg Central School District 2018 capital project, whereas the Trumansburg Central School District proposes to undertake the 2018 capital project to include building renovations at the Trumansburg Elementary School, Middle School, and High School with site work to include building additions of less than 10,000 square feet and asphalt replacement of the existing parking lot. Um, I won't continue to read this, it's extraordinarily lengthy. And now therefore be resolved that the client intends to establish itself as the lead agency with respect to the project in accordance with the CCOR regulations of six New York State, New York Commissioner's Regulations 617.6 and to give such notice of establishment. A motion? Second. Second. Discussion? Translation. Kimberly? Uh, so or the, Joe? The, this is required where uh, that the uh, hunt will complete for us in getting us permits. Anytime there's uh, potential of environmental impact, this is um, the work that needs to be completed so that we can take necessary precautions if we're moving dirt or soil and runoff and so on and so forth. So this is broad enough that it would cover either project, but it does fall within the timeline that Hunt needs to have to have this completed for us to move forward with that March 20th referendum. So it doesn't obligate us to anything. That is true. It just provides us the opportunity as we move forward we're to do so in a timely manner <coughs> and to meet all those state. Correct. Regulations. Okay. Any questions for either Kimberly or for Joe? Hearing none, um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And that brings us to the end of our new business, open forum. Um, at this time, we'd like to give district residents another opportunity to ask any questions about this agenda or about operations within the district. Personnel matters will not be addressed in public session. Comments may be recorded and responded to by the Board of Education or the superintendent within 24 to 48 hours. We ask that you introduce yourself to the board and that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. Maureen. <laughs> Maureen Chalish. Um, I don't have a copy of the agenda, so I don't know if this was on the consent agenda. Um, what is the corrective action plan of 2015 for the food service? Was that in the consent agenda or old business? That would, I mean, it says 2015. It was in the consent so, agenda. Okay. 
So um, a lot of times we don't answer these questions directly. However, we're a small community, and if we can take care of this question directly, I would choose to. So in 2015, we had an Office of the State Comptroller audit on our school lunch program, and there was corrective action that was taken. Um, it was actually signed by the board president at the time the corrective action was implemented. However, there is a new requirement with OSC that we need to, is it quarterly, Lauren? Mm -hmm. Quarterly document um, the last audit, and if there was a correct, corrective action plan, um, we recognize that this was actually not uh, approved by the Board of Education. It was, but it was never brought formally to a Board of Education meeting. So we are bringing this old business back to light to have a board acceptance date, um, and we will now be entering that date in the OSC portal, and we'll enter that every quarter until there's another audit by OSC, which could be several years from now. Okay. So it's a reporting requirement. In the it was spoken rate? up publicly at the time that it happened, but uh, it was an oversight in that it didn't get brought to the board for formal board approval. Is that the same as why the tax rate is listed in the agenda? This wasn't done in the summer? So yeah. the That's correct. It should have been done in late August. This is what appeared on our tax bills. This yes, was the yes. Tax yes, it's okay. old business. And um, I, I didn't get to read the email that went around on the neighborhood, but kudos was being sent to the Trumansburg School District for the article in the New York Times for the progress that they have made. Um, I'll forward that to you then. So then you can't comment on it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read the whole article, but it was the ranking. Do you know about it? No. Okay. I'll send it to you. So I just wondered what that improvement was, but you don't know what that was. Right. Okay. I'll send that to you. I came you, in um, yesterday's email. And then the last thing is um, screenagers, which we saw last year. Um, I don't know if John can address that or, you know, it was, um, we saw it in this community and Ithaca saw it and there was a lot of excitement in the school district about talking with the students and the families as to the effect of um, the technology on our students. Have we implemented any change in curriculum or any policy or programs in the district based on what we learned from that last year? The three building principals want to speak to that? I, I don't believe we have adopted a formal program. If I, so I'm, 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 I started immediately started looking for the New York Times article. Okay. You said that, so I don't. So I'm out for a second. <laughs> the screenagers, John. The so of the screenagers. You were yes. okay, so Maybe so you implement some of that. And yeah. So them. so there are some curriculum changes that are coming. Um, we're in the discussion phase of some of them, so I'm a little cautious about putting it out there for public consumption. But we're looking at some possible curricular changes um, to support. Um, primarily looking at ways to address to help support freshmen in the transition and dealing with some of the adult behaviors things like expanding our health curriculum English curriculum to enhance social media things like that but yes there's a lot of conversation that continues to happen about that so some of those things might be addressed in budget talks or things that would mean yes okay thanks okay. anyone else in the audience Great. thank you very much Board forum. Anyone have comments that they want to share with the public? For okay. Hearing none, may I have a motion to again adjourn to executive session um, for um, matters relating to the discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a, of a particular person or person? Second. Second. Thank you very much. We're adjourning to executive session, and we will probably not return to any public here or session again in terms of business being conducted at the end. So thank you very much. Thank you.